Zombie in Love by Kelly DiPuccio. Read with permission from Simon & Schuster Books. Mortimer was lonely. Cupid's ball was just a few weeks away, and he didn't have a sweetheart. Oh, he tried, but somehow the ladies didn't appreciate Mortimer's affections. He gave the girl at the bus stop a fancy box of chocolates. He gave the mail carrier a shiny red heart. And he gave the waitress at the diner a stunning diamond ring. Poor Mortimer. He read books and followed all of the advice. He took his dog for a walk in the park. He worked out at the gym. He even took ballroom dancing lessons. But nothing he did seemed to impress the girls. Then Mortimer got an idea. He placed an ad in the newspaper. Tall, dead, and handsome. If you like taking walks in the graveyard and falling down in the rain. If you're not into cooking. If you have half a brain. If you like waking up at midnight, horror films, and voodoo. Then I'm the guy you've looked for and I'm dying to meet you. Saturday, Cupid's Ball by the Punch Bowl at 7. Mortimer was sure this was the answer. On Saturday, he shopped for a new suit. He combed his hair and put on his best cologne. Cupid's ball was hopping. The couples were dancing and laughing and, well, having a ball. Mortimer took his place near the punch bowl and waited and waited and waited. Each time a girl approached the table, Mortimer would smile like this. And each time the girl would shriek and run away. He tried breath mints. He tried handing out roses. He tried being funny. Nothing worked. As the night wore on, the room began to empty. The punch bowl did not. Suddenly it became clear to Mortimer that nobody was dying to meet him. He began to shuffle toward the exit when he heard a loud thud. The thud was followed by an even louder crash. Mortimer turned around. There on the floor was a girl. Her name was Mildred, and she was drop-dead gorgeous. She smiled like this. Mildred stood up and shook the pineapple rings from her hair. Am I too late, she asked. The clock struck midnight. You're right on time, said Mortimer. Mortimer and Mildred danced and held hands and dined by the moonlight. It was love at first bite. The end. Just like a mama by Alice Faye Duncan Read with permission from Simon & Schuster Mommy and Daddy live miles away. I wish we lived together. Maybe one day that will be. I live with Mama Rose right now. She is just like a mama to me. Just like a mama, she combs my hair. She buttons my winter coat. And when I leave for school, she waves and shouts from her front porch, I love you, ladybug. Just like a mama, she teaches me things, like how to make my bed and dribble a basketball. She bought me a watch when I turned five, and she taught me to tell time. She bought me a bike when I turned six. It is yellow like the sun. In the summer, we ride to the city park. We listen to the blackbirds sing. Mama Rose tells me often, One day, child, when you grow up, you will spread your wings and fly. My mother and father live far away. I wish we lived together. I wish that they were here. But I live with Mama Rose right now. She is just like a mama to me. 
Just like a mama, she wrinkles her nose and calls my name when I don't eat my dinner. Carol Olivia Clementine, green peas are good for you. Yes, ma'am, I say. I wrinkle my nose and go ahead and eat them because there will be no chocolate cake until I eat my veggies. Sometimes I forget to make my bed. My bedroom is a mess and Mama Rose is not pleased. Like a mama, she points upstairs and yells, Carol Olivia Clementine, you have chores to do. I run along. I clean my room. I know it is not perfect. But I do my very best and Mama Rose sings my name. Carol Olivia Clementine, you did a super job. My mother and father live far away. I wish we lived together. I wish that they were here. I live with Mama Rose right now. Mama Rose cares for me. Mama Rose is a hug and a kiss. Mama Rose is my home. She loves me like a mama. And I love Mama Rose. Fluffy McWhiskers Cuteness Explosion by Stephen Martin with permission from Simon and Schuster. Fluffy McWhiskers was cute. Dangerously cute. Yes, Fluffy McWhiskers was so cute that if you saw her, you'd explode. Elephants, snakes, platypuses, even a cute little koala, if you saw Fluffy McWhiskers, kaboom! This, of course, made Fluffy very sad and extremely lonely. She tried to fix her problem. An ugly sweater, a bad haircut, but nothing worked. They only made her cuter. She even tried wearing a paper bag over her head, but that was ridiculously cute. And just when she thought it couldn't get any worse, they published her picture in the newspaper. That's when things got out of hand. Kaboom! Fluffy McWhiskers had no choice. She needed to go somewhere far, far away where no one would find her. Eventually, she found exactly what she was looking for. Nope, spoke too soon. Fluffy tried again. The island was perfect. True, volleyball was not so much fun. Getting her tummy scratched required a lot of work and pizza took forever to be delivered. But Fluffy could eat, sleep, read, and even watch the stars from her super cute telescope day after day, night after night. All alone. Again, she tried to fix the problem, but she got hungry. There Fluffy sat day after day, night after night, getting cuter and cuter and fluffier and fluffier. Sometimes she tossed a letter out to sea to pass the time. Until one day, Fluffy heard a very unusual sound. Fluffy freaked. Someone was on the island. Someone had found her. Someone was about to explode. Fluffy tried to run, but there was nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. So she closed her eyes and waited. Huh, nothing. I don't understand, said Fluffy. Why don't you explode, dog? I was going to ask you the same thing, cat, replied the extremely cute dog. Volleyball suddenly became pretty awesome, and getting her tummy scratched required a lot less work. Fluffy had finally found a friend. 
Aw, how cute is that? 